how to find the dominant pole, right? So let's let's look at this. We find the two pole by inspection. If you really solve the small signal circuit only for the high frequency part, not the low frequency part, you get something like this. Very lengthy. It is this term divided by a times s squared plus b times s plus 1, right? Very lengthy. So that's why you don't want to do that. But however, we do miss something. You see that here we have a zero. What is the zero in this case? How do you find the zero again? Thank you. CGD S minus GM times RL equal to zero. So as, as a result, zero, thank you, equals to GM over CG. Okay, so this is the zero uh, in this circuit, right? Um, so we miss the zero for the method we use, right? If the zero turn out to be uh, important, right? It may be between your pole or whatever, then we screw up. So you cannot always trust what we are doing. You need to be careful, right? Verify with the full equation or with the simulator. How about the pole of this circuit? I don't think any of you can find it right away, right? But how do we find it? How do we find the pole of this expression? Okay. So what he's saying is that we set this equals to zero, right? And then you get the pole one, two equals to negative B plus minus square root B square minus four AC divided by two A. So eventually what we learn in high school or middle school is useful. <laughs> Please, let me use this actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, what is A and B is so lengthy. Again, meaningless to me, right? So, but this is the full solution, the accurate solution, right? You want to compare against if you do estimation. So what do we get here? Just to recall what we get, I just uh, show you earlier in, uh, in the earlier a slice using the inspection what we get is p1 equals to 1 over r s times c g s plus c g d times 1 plus g m r d okay and p2 equals to 1 over in this case is r l parallel r zero times C D B plus C G D times one plus one over G M. G M R D. Right? This was the equation we derived earlier. Right? So I'm showing you here is just that this one gives you some insight. Right, because uh, this is simple, resistor times capacitor and with the gain. Resistor times capacitor with the gain. This one you basically plug in this, right? You, you cannot get any insight, right? So that's the first thing. You understand the complete solution. Uh, I mean, using this method, we miss the zero, and but we have more insight. Now, then we want to introduce another skill. This skill is also good for some uh, brain calculation. Nowadays, this is almost not useful because your uh, computers are so fast. 50 years ago is good because they don't have calculator. But this is still important as an insight, uh, again, right? Because you don't want to dump everything to the Mathematica or to uh, H-Spice. Uh, why? Uh, again, for insight. So what if I have two poles? If I have two poles, right? You can say this. You can say this is not relevant to the previous one, or we can use the previous one as an example. Now, what if I have two poles, but one of the poles is pretty far away, and I'm given the equation a s square right like here. I'm given this equation. This is what I want to solve. 
right? I want to see some insight, and at the same time, I don't want to solve this this equation. So what can we do? So if right given if you are given a s square plus b s plus one equal to zero, and you know that it has, of course, it has two pole because it's a second order. And assume that you know that P2 is much larger than P1. Now we can always try that and then check later after you done this assumption. Uh, no, actually it might not be easy to check, uh, I'm wrong, right? But assume this is the case. Assume you are able to make it P2 is much larger than what P1, right? Then we say P1 dominant. Okay, then what does it mean? Now, if you look at this equation, I can always express it as something like this. 1 minus s divided by p1 times 1 minus s divided by p2. Equal to 0. Right? Because when s equal to p1, this is 0, right? When s equal to p2, this is 0, right? So this is the same as this equation. Because this is 0, so I can multiply anything so that this is the same. Right? If I know the root of a quadratic equation, I can always put it as 1 minus x divided by root plus times 1 minus x, x divided by another root equal to 0, right? The quadratic equation. Make sense or no? Yeah? So I can do this, right? So then... I expand this one. It becomes 1 minus 1 divided by P1 plus divided by, uh, what, plus 1 divided by P2 times S plus S squared divided by P1 P2 equals to 0. Do you agree? I just expand them, right? But we say that they, they, they are the same, right? So 1 equal to 1. Then this term times S equal to BS. This term times s squared equal to a s squared, right? But we just say that p2 is much larger than p1, which means 1 over p2 is much smaller than 1 over p1, right? For example, if my pole, this is at 1 gigahertz, this is at 10 megahertz, then 100, one, 1 over 1 gigahertz is 100 times smaller than 1 over 100 megahertz. So this was, let's say, supposed to be 0 0.1001. I can ignore the 0, 0, 001, right? So then it means I have negative 1 over P1 plus 1 over P2 equals to B. Approximately equal to negative 1 over P1 equals to B. So B equals to what? Negative. Ah, I already give you the answer, right? 1 over P1. Am I right? So you give me this equation, so bulky. But I'm not going to solve this. <laughs> I assume that the P2 is much, much larger than P1. Then I already know that P, the B is just equal to 1 over this guy. This is P1. Can you compare to this one? Right? Uh, this is neck, I mean, this is the magnitude, so we uh, can ignore the uh, sign. So, uh, exactly. So you see that this is the same compared to our previous method. It's just that we have an extra RL times CGD plus CDB. CGD and CDB are... CGD is tiny, right? CDB can also be tiny if the junction is not heavily dot, right? So that really depends. For example, if let's say you're doing FinFET, it almost has no CDB, then it's a very good approximation. But if you're doing like uh, 28 nanometer technology, it's bulk, 
and it's heavily doped. It has a very high substrate concentration. If you remember the PN junction, if they're heavily doped, depletion layer is thin, so you have a very large capacitance. Then this may be an important term. So with this, right, can I also find out P2? I can find that also. Right, then from here, what is P2? Let me just call this one. I find out what is, oh, sorry, this, this one is meaningless the way I write it. I should write it as P1 equal to one over P1 equal to 1 over B, right? I want to find the pole. Okay, so how about P2? I know 1 over P1 times P2 equals to A, right? This time I cannot ignore P2 because it's multiplication, right? Even P1 is much larger, uh, P2 is much larger than P1. I cannot do any simplification. But I already know what is P1. I know P2 equal to 1 over P1 divided by A based on this, but 1 over P1 is equal to what? Negative, Negative B over A. Very good. Right. So then now you can just plug in. It is still pretty good, right? Uh, B1 divided by A, you can uh, see something. And you can compare to see if they really have a, a very different uh, frequency, like uh, at least a few times away. If they are, then your approximation is good. If not, unfortunately, you need to go back to solve this high school equation, right? So this is the so-called dominance pole analysis. And it is very useful in the old time. And you might not just have two poles, you can have multiple poles. Again, it works for the dominance pole, right? It saves you a lot of time. Now, you have calculator, of course, becomes meaningless, but you, based on this, you will be able to do some very fast he he uh, brain calculation yourself to gain the insight again. Okay, yeah. Any questions? Okay, if no, then we look at, let me see. Yeah, I'm still. Let's look at the Cusco amplifier. Okay, uh, 